Are you ready to embark on a journey? How does a series of seven books with a couple novellas sound that's still not finished? Welcome back to another edition of Dro Talks Audiobooks. Dro here. Today I'm going to be talking about book one in the Expeditionary Forces series, Columbus Day. Written by Craig Ellison and narrated by my man, R.C. Bray. So I've listened to every book in the series with the exception of the two novellas, which I do plan to listen to. I just haven't gotten around to it. And uh, it's a long series. Each book is, I want to say, about between 8 and 10 hours long. So, so they're not that long. It's not that many hours in total. But I have been listening to this series since book one. And every time a book finishes, it's a mixture of joy and sadness because I got to wait for the next book in the series. But let's talk about why this is. So first, before I start, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this type of content. And I also do updates on, on sales that are coming out on Audible. Well, so far I've only did one on Audible, but I do plan to keep an eye out on all the audiobook type platform so if that interests you make sure you ring that bell to be notified without further ado let's get into columbus day so columbus day is book one in the expeditionary force series as i mentioned where you follow sergeant bishop and he's at home on leave in maine if i'm not mistaken and he's just hanging out you know my his business he's a he's your average everyday joe i mean he, he is a sergeant in the army and he is very disciplined, very dedicated, but there's nothing particularly special about this individual. And that is when all hell breaks loose and our planet, our species finds out we're not alone in the cosmos. How do we find out that we're not alone? Well, that's because our planet is attacked by a species called the Ruhar, lovingly known as the hamsters. It's a species of large humanoid hamsters, if you can imagine, that are far superior than us in technology. And without warning, without cause, they just come, wreak havoc, and attack our planet. Destroy a lot of our infrastructures. Take the world decades, if not centuries, into the past. And it is on this occasion that Bishop, who is on home, on leave, you know, does his part to fight back. And, and he, you know, with his crew uh, that, that form around him, they, they take the fight to the Ruhar. They actually shoot down one vessel or one vessel crashes on its own accord. I'm not ex exactly sure. And they do what any good army soldier would do. They go over there to kick butts, take names, take a prisoner, and, and really understand what's going on. So they, take, they actually get there. They take this prisoner. But Bishop does something. Uh, he does two things. To accomplish this, he hijacks uh, some sort of truck that's made for kids entertainment centered around barney the the cartoon or not the cartoon well he's both a cartoon but you know barney uh, i love you you love me we are a family something like that uh, that barney so he he takes this truck that looks like that and uh, this is a very defining moment because from this day forward uh, they call him barney and uh, humanity has no hopes of destroying the ruar or the hamsters because they have the high ground they can just bombard the planet but that's when to our avail the Kristang come in and save the day they chase the ruhar away who are the Kristang? well they're on other alien species of lizards um uh, or a reptile humanoid of course because we all got to be humanoid uh, a humanoid type species and, and they come and save the day and all they want for payment is for humans to help them fight the war against the Ruhar. That's where the expeditionary force is developed. And they're, they pick out a bunch of people, Barney or Mr. Bishop included. And they get shipped off to a training planet where they train in a very heavy gravity with the Kristang. And then from there they go to a planet called Paradise, which is a Ruhar planet. And, and basically they fight for control of that planet. The planet is filled with nothing but Ruhar civilians. And it is here that we find out that everything is not as it seems. And then you really kind of realize quickly that humanity doesn't have allies in this war. We're nothing but technologically inadvanced subjects to be ruled or exterminated at a whim. We find out that there's a very large war 
on two sides with a lot of subset of species going all the way up. And on, on the side that we find ourselves uh, well, allied with, and I say allied in a very loose term, you have the Maxols. The Ruhar stand on another subspecies and they have their subspecies up as well. And basically each level fights with themselves because uh, the Ruhar, for example, cannot fight with the Maxols because the Maxols are just too techno technologically advanced. So there's skirmishes at levels there's treaties, there's rules, there's all kinds of implications. It's a big universe that is very much not alone. And all this happened because a wormhole opened near our solar system that would have given the Ruhar a foot in Kristang territory. And that's why the reverse of that, excuse me, would have given the Kristang a foothold in Ruhar territory. And that's where this conflict and how we got drawn into it all came to be so there's a lot of uh, a lot of sci-fi in this a lot of technology that's discussed and talked about uh, it's very fascinating it's very fun but the the best part of this book and this series are two factors and the first is the characters especially bishop he is again he's your everyday joe always trying to do the right thing finding himself in extraordinary predicaments and doing what honestly most of us would do in those circumstances, which really aligns you and, and really kind of binds you to this character because he doesn't do anything that we wouldn't do. And and one of these experiences brings him um, in, in a battle with the Kristang against the Ruhar where he actually shoots down a Ruhar ship killing, I, I want to say it was like 50 of them or so. And due to this endeavor, the Kristang actually promote him from sergeant all the way to colonel. So he he consistently calls himself, I uh, can't remember the term he used, but like a fairy tale colonel, if you will. He don't feel like he earned it. He was just doing his job, and he don't he's not happy about killing Ruhar. But it, you know, in war, it's you or them, and he was definitely in that. It is here that he does see how the Kristang are treating the humans and they treat us bad. They do treat us like an inferior species and and everything looks bad. And it's at this time that the Ruhar, the, the Ruhar Space Force comes to paradise and absolutely annihilates the Kristang. So now we find humans on paradise out of Kristang control. But there are uh, uh, several followers that really do believe in the Kristang and they go with the Kristang. Uh, but the Kristang couldn't take everyone. And a lot of people didn't like the way the Kristang treated them. So that they, did, we, they didn't know what to do. So Bishop was about to get executed. Because he actually went against an order of the Kristang. And him with a handful of other people when the, when the Ruhar came. And it was in his uh, imprisonment that he came across a beer can. And Bishop, being a regular guy, did what any regular guy would do when they see a beer can. They would try to drink it. And as he picked up this beer can, it started talking. Think of Alexa, the Echo device. That's what comes to my mind, just shiny and silver. So Amazon, you need to make a Amazon Echo Alexa device. And of course, you got to name it Skippy, which is the second part that really makes not only this book, but the whole series fantastic. Skippy is an advanced AI from the elders, a species that no longer exists, the ones that created the wormholes very conveniently for all these other extraterrestrials to traverse space and time through. And Bishop being a regular guy and kind of an asshole, Skippy kind of emulates that, takes on a British accent for whatever reason, and how he came to get to that information, who knows? Plot hole, but we kind of overlooked that because Skippy is fantastic. He is funny, he is hilarious. And when he first came on, I absolutely did not like him. I was like, plot device. And I really don't like plot devices. But Skippy is one excellent plot device. So do yourself a favor and go check out Expeditionary Forces, Columbus Day Book 1. And look forward to audiobook reviews for the whole series. I'm going to catch up. I'm already on Book 7. I'm listening to Book 7.5 right now, the first novella. So... Have you listened to Expeditionary Forces? If so, what did you think about it? Did you like Skippy? Which one did you like better, Skippy or Bishop? They're both good. I also have a, a dear space in my heart for Adams. So there, there are a lot of great characters in this book. So, as always... 
This has been Drove Talks. Thank you for listening. Don't forget that like and subscribe. Ring that bell to get notified. And we'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.